it should come to no one's surprise just how hypocritical and how biased Twitter is. I made a video on it, I think about a week ago, for the fact that I got locked out of my locked out of my account for a week, basically for retaliating against some people calling me some very unsavoury names, and it seems like they're at it again. There's a couple of articles I want to go through, basically showing just how biased Twitter is, especially when it comes to the right and the left. Obviously, I say that in quotes because people uh, Twitter seems to deem anyone who is even to slightly right of Mao as being the far right. So, obviously, the left and right labels mean absolutely nothing when it comes to these sort of things. So, obviously, I want to just go through a couple of articles to just show just how biased and how hypocritical they really are. Twitter suspends New York Post writer after he exposes Carlos Mars's riches and hypocrisy. Obviously, there's been an update, but there was an extra update after this. Twitter has suspended John Levine, a reporter for the New York Post, following his publication of an article on former Vox video editor and leftist firebrand Carlos Maza, whose family fortune he laid bare. In the piece titled YouTube Socialist Carlos Maza Slams the Wealthy But Lived in Luxury, Levine uncovered how the social media activist lives in the lap of luxury while simultaneously condemning others for the sin of being wealthy. He absolutely hates the rich people. Now, I don't care. I honestly don't care about that. He can hate who he hate who who, who he, he can hate who he feels he wants to hate. That's his choice. But don't do it while be while claiming to know what it's like to live in a destitute and to struggle. I am a disabled man. I'm currently unemployed. I'm currently having to spend next month's bill money on food to survive. Oh, that's going to put me into debt that I've only just managed to get myself out of. That is living in struggle and living in destitute. Obviously, I do this just to try and earn a little bit of money while I'm looking for employment. But my last job took me five years to find because, obviously, as I said, I'm a disabled man. And as much as people like to preach it, no one likes to hire disabled people, especially when they can't walk that far or live their life in pain because you're going to have to take breaks and you're going to have to basically not uh, basically work slower than what they want you to work it's just the way it is uh, Marza attained infamy last year when he led a campaign to deplatform conservative pundit Stephen Crowder from YouTube and other social media networks and continues to call for suspensions of his political adver adversaries on social media I think he, he, I think he still has in his bio that Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist. Now that phrase alone is going to get this video demonetized. But there we go. As Levine details, Maza often attacks political figures, including uh, Democratic pundit James Carville, for living in an absolutely obscene four-story mansion. And if he wants to live in a four-story mansion, he can. If he wants to live in a cardboard box, he can. That's his choice. Referring to Carville as a masterful con artist and condemning him for warning other Democrats away from socialism. Mars reportedly wrote, we should treat gay people the same way we treat straight people, yet you caused an apocalypse because you didn't like being made fun of and you didn't like being mocked. That, is Steve, that was Stephen Crowder treating you like he would any straight person, but you didn't like it because it was aimed at you. Marza, like other internet activists, gamers, uh, garners the support of his fan base through Patreon, where he serves content for uh, to over 700 patrons, earning him two, five, and ten dollar per supporter. Well, this is a great caveat. Obviously, if you'd like to support my work and you like what I do here on this channel, please consider becoming a patron. At the moment, it's the only thing keeping me sustained. So, obviously, every bit is welcome, even if it's only a couple of bucks a month, as it says there. It all adds up and it all helps towards bills at the end of the month. Uh, despite his ability to collect a monthly paycheck from his fans, Levine uncovered how the socialist firebrand is connected to multiple Florida mega mansions, a 7.1 million pad on the Upper West Side purchased under an LLC, and a yacht by luxury boat maker Donzi. This 
Am I spelling that right? Danzy Donzy? No, Donzy. This, along with a detailed history of his family's vast wealth, which includes millions of dollars in real estate, much of which Marza inherited, unlike James Carville. Since reporting uh, this story, Levine was banned for the post, in which he tweeted, Here are some posts of the Florida home where Carlos Marza is registered to vote, which includes photographs of the, of the Marza's family water, uh, family's waterfront palace in Boca Raton, Florida. And obviously, you've got it there. That is no way living in struggle or destitute. I live in a two-bedroom house. A two-bedroom house that obviously is paid for, but my grandfather owns it. Obviously, eventually, the deeds will pass to me. Because, obviously, but, yeah. We still have to pay for the upkeep of the house, so... Curiously, Marza himself was never suspended for tweeting a similar set of photos about James Carville. Another reporter and a former contributor to the Young Turks, Jordan Charrington, was suspended for posting misleading information about voting after he quoted Joe Biden from misspeaking. And obviously you've got it there. Uh, Twitter is now punishing journalists for reporting facts. Sunday afternoon, Jonathan posted that he'd heard back from Twitter and obviously... That's when it comes to the update at the top of the story, where it's update after Jonathan Levine was suspended from Twitter for posting a factual story about journalist Carlos Melzer. He appealed the decision and was reinstated. In an email, a representative from Twitter claimed that the suspension was in error. And it's got there, update, Twitter locked me out with my account last night over some of the Carlos Melzer reporting. A rep for the company tells me that their action against me was an error. Till dear, I'm out of Twitter jail and all of my original postings here remain live. But not for long, because just a few hours later, they resuspended him for the same post. Breaking Twitter resuspends New York Post writer for tweets about activist journalist. After Jonathan Levine was suspended from Twitter for posting a story about Carlos Marza, he appealed to the decision and was reinstated. In an email, a representative from Twitter claimed that the suspension was in error. Shortly thereafter, uh, thereafter, however, Levine received further correspondence from a Twitter spokesperson. Despite initially calling their decision to lock my account an error, uh, Twitter locked me out again a few hours later over the same Carlos Marza story. I have reluctantly deleted the tweet and I'm sharing with you the timeline here. And obviously it's got, uh, thanks for reaching out, the enforcement action we took was an error and the account is now unlocked. And then f a little bit later on, you see literally just four hours later, Upon further investigation, these tweets violate our, tw our Twitter rules, specifically for our p private information policy. The account will remain locked until the tweets are removed. We can attribute to a Twitter spokesperson. Uh, you can attrib attribute to a Twitter spokesperson. In other words, someone reported it again. Writing for the Post Millennia earlier today, Charles Emas Chong detailed the account on Jonathan Levine's Twitter suspension. Levine's called the uh, resuspension Orwellian tweeted, despite initially uh, calling their decision to lock my account an error. Twitter locked me out again a few hours later after the same Carlos Marza story. I uh, reluctantly deleted the tweet and I'm sharing with you the timeline here. The controversy around Levine and Mazda, uh, Mazda apparently, first started when the New York Post published an article titled YouTube Socialist. Yeah, in the article, Levine detailed how uh, the social media activists lives in luxury, all while condemning others for their, wel uh, for their wealth. Mazda attained widespread internet infamy last year, basically about Carla, uh, Crowder. But here's the thing. Carlos Marza's tweet is still up. Apparently, he doesn't violate the Twitter rules. But, and as you can see here, it's the same thing. Posting the pictures of the house. How come it's good enough for Carlos Marza to be able to post them, but not good enough for anyone else? I honestly don't get it. It's just, it just shows the sheer hypocrisy that Twitter shows. It's okay for one person to do it, but it's not okay for another person, depending all on the person's politics. In fact, you know what? Uh, I don't. I don't, don't generally like to do this. Uh, where is it? Includes private information. Uh, 
There we go. Shows someone's private address. There we go. I don't usually like to report tweets, but if it's good enough for them to do it to John Levine, and it's good enough for them to do it to Carlos Maza. You cannot apply the rules selectively. Either they're there for everyone or they're there for no one. Apply them equally or don't apply them at all. That is just basically how you should live. When it comes to enforcing rules, you either enforce them all or you force them all at the same time against everyone, no matter who commits the, uh, who commits the crime of breaking the rules. Or you enforce them against no one and you just let everything run wild I personally like the second uh, just let everything run wild and let everyone say whatever the hell they want it's going to make more for a more fun experience but there we go anyway if you like the video obviously leave a thumbs up if you made it this far into the video please mention that in the comment section and I'll heart your t uh, comment Obviously, as I said in the video, please consider becoming a patron. Link to that is in the description down below. Or if you'd like to just do a one-time donation, there's a link to Streamlabs that's also down in the description down below. Obviously, thank you for watching this far into the video. And thank you for keeping the content, uh, making it worth keep doing the content. And thank you for keeping the lights on. It means a lot to me anyway. Thank you all for watching the video. There should be a stream at some point tonight. I have it linked. I have it uh, booked, marked for 11 p.m. GMT. But I usually try to try to go uh, uh, go live a little bit earlier than that. This is basically just a time. Uh, basically, just a time set to where I need to get everything I need done by. I.e., all the all the sources collected. But this time, obviously, the sources have been collected for me because I'll be going over two more female paedophile streams from my good friend at Scribe Undead. Obviously, I will be linking to his new Twitter in the description of the stream. So, obviously, go check that out when I go live or go set, uh, click the reminder button so that you can see when I go live and also go give him a hey follow. It would be awesome. He's a good friend of mine and he's a good person. I will warn you though, he does post some seriously out there stuff. It's not out there as in crazy, it's just out there as in it's, it can get a bit disgusting. So consider yeah, that your warning. But obviously if you follow me here and you follow me on you, uh, Twitter, you probably see it anyway. Anyway, as I said, thank you for watching this far into the video and thank you for keeping the lights on, yada yada, all that mushy stuff. I'll see you all hopefully tonight in the uh, string, so obviously look forward to that. I'll see you then. Bye for now.